Welcome back everybody. Today we are doing a sketchbook spread. This is the first time I've done something like this, you know, that isn't like a full piece. So hopefully y'all like it. It I jump around a lot when I sketch. So you will you will definitely see that. Starting off, I am using a fountain pen. This is a Kaweco Sport. And inside it is an ink sample that my friend got me. He got me some waterproof fountain pen ink, which, you know, is not normal because in the sense that almost every single fountain pen ink is very water soluble because it helps it flow through, you know, the nib and not gunk it all up. So this is a pigment based ink, if I remember correctly, rather than like a dye or something, which gives it like waterproof. Anyway, I've been wanting to try it for a while. The bottle's a little expensive, but he got me some samples of it. So that does come up a couple of times. Uh, and then in this sketch, I found out that I have these pens. I used to be really into bullet journaling, but I've kind of fallen out of it because I find out just very simple, like planning without like any decorations is really what keeps me going and like in the sense of like, I'll actually use it. So I had these pens and I'm like, I'll try, I'll try doodling with them. They're, I believe they are uh, Uni Signos. Here, let me grab one. Uniball Signos DX. They're the 0.38s. If I believe these are the weird, not weird, but they have like, these are the blacks. Like that's the blue black. I have a lavender black, red black. So it just means they're, they're darker colors. And as you can tell, I've already jumped around, but now I'm going back to the first one and throwing some watercolor pencil on it. Like I said, I will be working really all over the place. I am using my XL mixed media paper from Canson, and it's a very big sketchbook. I haven't worked in a sketchbook this big since college or high school that I would, you know, bring around to all my classes. So I have a lot of space. I can work with wet mediums on that piece and then let it dry, and then I can go back to it while I'm working on something else, like right now. I'm doing like little flame guy. I, again, this is very much a stream of consciousness, just doodling whatever my hand wants to doodle and color in my sketchbook. There was no planning. I just start drawing and then I'm like, oh, let's see where this goes. Like I started drawing the portrait because I am obsessed in the sense of my comfort zone is deep into faces and, and portraits right now. I know I should try to break out of it, but I'm just... I'm just enjoying my time doing them. So I started with that. And as you can tell, it's mostly going to be that today, but different things. Had a lot of fun just throwing these watercolors in, trying to make them like, ooh, how do I want to do this? <laughs> and yeah, I did draw that little, I did have it record because my hand was in the way, but I drew that like little mask kind of thing. There are some, I will say now, there are some mime clownish kind of like face makeup that I do it, it's more so mimes but um I do draw some of those like kind of face makeup not like clothing or the hair or anything but if anyone has like any issues with like like really deep clown fear that that kind of messes with them I will say maybe skip out on this video I don't want to trigger anybody I know I have some few friends that are really freaked out by clowns and I don't you know, I don't pressure, like, ask people, like, well, what exactly is it? So I don't exactly know what freaks them out. So just a little warning. <laughs> and here is my first actual sketching with a pencil first. This is actually my newest D&D &D character. Uh, she hasn't come into our campaign yet, but I am so excited to play her. I've been drawing her digitally a lot. You'll see I have a lot of, uh, a lot, there are two pictures of her digitally on my Twitter right now. And I've just been drawing her a lot, you know. Here she's looking very sad because who doesn't love a D&D &D character that has some angst? Am I right? <laughs> and here's me going back to here, jumping back, being like, I want to make cute little blushy, kind of like a little face makeup. Which is, you know, it's cute. I wanted it to be cute, not creepy. So I will say that. I don't draw creepy clowns. And then... Well, here, let me just, let me show you what happens. <laughs> yep, I was just trying to pick a piece of lint off of my Posca marker, and it, the nib just fully came out, and I literally sat there for quite a good few seconds just holding it like, what, 
what do I, what do I, what happened? <laughs> but I just popped it back in after panicking and it went right back in. So <laughs> I just thought that was really funny when it happened. And then like looking back at the footage, I literally, you can see my brain just processing what happened. Like, rut row. <laughs> and here, after that, I just jumped back to this like kind of goblin-y character I made. And now... We go back to this sketch. Here I'm using the Koiko Sport again with the waterproof fountain pen ink. If I remember correctly, um, this is the Platinum Carbon Black ink, which it has been highly rated by artists being like, oh, I love using this with my watercolor. And I wanted that because I hate using fine liners. They're the only like waterproof sort of like liner things I have, though I did find out that those uniball signos I was using earlier also work with watercolor so there's that too but I I hate using fine liners now I used to use them all the time so I still have a bunch and I've been using those for like my watercolors and I just hate them they don't they but I love how fountain pens are going I love how it flows and I can get the lines I just really like them like when I did that hair like that was so fun her her mouth is a little meh. I'll say her face is kind of a little meh this is very, very quick sketches, and when I get to inking the nose, you'll see me just keep trying to make it look more like a nose, and then I just give up, because you know what? This is a sketchbook. I'm allowed to have ugly drawings in my sketchbook, because it's for practicing and just trying things out and, you know, having fun. I want to draw my D&D character, and if she looks a little weird, that's fine. It's totally okay making bad art, because making bad art is better than making no art. At least, you know, that's my opinion. And something that I'm trying to allow myself to do. You know, not keep myself to a higher, like, expectation than other people and, like, advice I would give. That's that's always a rough time. you got to be nice to yourself like you'd be nice with, like, your friends and, you know, other people. But I do really like how the eyes came out because I just love making messy lines, especially with a fountain pen. The lines that I get, it just feels good. I don't, I don't know why I've suddenly disliked fine liners, but it's just something in how I draw now that I just don't like how they look and what I do with them. Totally okay for anybody else to use them, obviously. It's just something that I've found recently. And now going back, adding some just Prismacolors over top, little goblin girl, giving her some makeup, because why not? Drawing makeup on characters. I love makeup. I love crazy makeup, wild makeup, but... I almost never do it on my characters, even though, you know, I would probably look really good. It's just because it's a little, it's a little daunting because you're like, oh, I got to get the eye shading right. And then you're like, but now I'm going to add something that changes the natural eye shading, you know, but eh, <laughs> thought I would try it out and maybe I'll practice more on other pieces too. But I really was just having fun. I wanted to draw her, add more color and a little shading, add some sparklies because I thought, you know what? She looks pretty cool. And here... So I have this pen. I don't even remember what this pen is. It's a brush pen. It has no th nothing, no brand or anything on the barrel. <laughs> and but it's like fibrous, like actual like brush pen in the sense it's not like a felt. It has like actual like fibers that look like a brush. And it got this really cool like effect as you can see I got on the the little flames to make it kind of like that dry brush effect, which just does it if you do it kind of fast it's not dying or anything but it's very thick so I don't use it for most of my art because I do draw pretty small and it's kind of hard to control and all that stuff but I thought it'd be good to pull that out and just play with it a little bit and I do really like how that little flamey guy came out with it I think I think it was a pretty cool effect not something I usually do but it was fun and now here after doing that little little mask up there I thought I'm gonna do more of a person wearing like a mask like that and there's me changing the face shape deciding now nah, let's let's go circle circle looks a little cooler the the square kind of on top it reminded me too much of that one courage the cowardly dog episode where that i don't remember what character but they had a mask that was very similar and it had that face shape and it was just like a pretty girl face and i'm like that's that's too close i want this to be a little more like mime and more kind of like an inspiration i will say is i've been watching a lot watching it's a podcast i've been listening to the magnus archives a lot and there is a creepy character that's like a mannequin but she has like she's designed to look like a circus 
kind of mannequin ringleader or something. And so she doesn't have like an actual face. She just has like a painted on face. And I'm like, I want to draw something kind of like that. Maybe a little spooky, not like, you know, it's a, it's a mask, not a actual like person's face. So that is definitely how I wanted it. And I wanted to draw more fun, cutesy kind of, kind of like, I'm not sure. I don't really know anything about like the culture or history of mimes versus uh, clown makeup. So I'm not really sure which one I'm kind of going towards. I just did some shapes that I thought were cool. And here I'm just making the body kind of black, you know, undistinguishable. And it's just like, all you can see is the mask. And I thought, you know, I thought that was kind of neat. I want to draw something cutesy, but maybe a little off-putting. And, yep, here's me jumping again. I really should, you know, figure out what exactly is going to happen before I actually do these voiceovers. But I did do the base color for her skin in a watercolor pencil. But I do like all the rest of the shading with actual watercolors. Mainly because I didn't want to try <laughs> and blend, or not blend, to mix the right skin tone color for her. But I had a watercolor pencil that was basically the exact base tone of her skin color so I thought I'll just do the base coat with that and do like the shading and other things there while I wait for because again I did the lining on the little mask uh, character I did that with the fountain pen and I wanted to give it ample time to dry before going in with any kind of watercolor that I do later and you know get that time so that's what I like to do like, I did the base skin, blended it out with water, and while that dries, I'm going to sketch this little face. Again, with another Signo pen. And this is, I think it's just a brown, really, which is it's pretty fun. And I was like, I just want to draw faces. I really wanted to draw some eyes I wanted to get. I love drawing eyes with, like, a lot of messy lines and try to just give them as much, like, kind of weird emotion as I can. I'm really just trying to find what... I want my art to feel like what I want it to, you know, just trying to find what I want my art to look like right now. I'm getting back into how to use stuff, and now it's just kind of sort of finding myself is, I guess, what I want to do. But also, like, draw what, what's fun to me there. I wanted to draw another profile, but literally just wanted to draw the profile, so nothing else. Uh, Didn't even finish the back of the head, because... That is actually how I started the flamey guy, because I'm like, I want to draw a profile. But then I was like, I don't want to draw hair or a neck. So he got flames instead. And I gave that person a little side cut. <laughs> Not almost entirely exactly the same as the goblin girl. Don't mind me. I have I, I have very simple tastes, and it's I like drawing foopy side cuts. And then here's me going back, doing some red diamonds that I really like. Is it like Harlequin, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what style I did. I have a friend who knows a lot more about it. And maybe after she watches this video, she'll be like, oh, I can tell you. And I'll be like, hell yeah, tell me. I want to know. I love listening to my friends talk about things that they're interested in. Which is great, because I tell my friends lots of things that I'm interested in. <laughs> and here, I'm just going on. I thought, go with the kind of sketchiness of the body. Pulled out a red Posca marker. I love them, but I don't use them nearly enough, so I'm going to try to use them a lot more in my sketchbooks. Just did the background, and here I'm actually drawing the same character, kind of, but sideways, because I was like, okay, well, how does this mask work? And I thought, what if it's just kind of like a face plate, like there's no like straps or anything, because I didn't want to draw that, but it's just there. So there's no like outward lips, those are just painted on, but the nose kind of sticks out, so... That's actually like carved in there. And I thought, let's give it wiggly lines because I drew it so sketchily. So I guess this is kind of creepy, I guess. I, I did say I didn't draw them scary or anything, but I guess it's more like I didn't draw them scary in like the normal way, just kind of like off-putting. That's kind of how it goes like with the Magnus Archive. That's what I was thinking. I've been listening to the Magnus Archives a lot. I'm only in like season four, so no spoilers, but I really love just how it goes. Like, the energy, the, the, the vibes, the spooky vibes that aren't just, like, pure jump scares or anything like that. I really like that. So, that was just what I was kind of giving the feeling of uneasiness. But, you know, not everything is like that. Like, here I'm just shading, shading. 
I don't know why I sang. It's it's a dreary day, and when dreary days, they either get me sad or I just get weird. I've just been editing all day, and now I'm doing the voiceover. <laughs> I will say I got worried because when I was shading uh, this character, it was getting like kind of grayish and almost muddy, and I'm like, oh no, is it is the pen like ink? Is it actually like going but I think it was more like it was just mixing with the watercolor pencil underneath because watercolor pencil kind of like reactivates really easily I found so that's probably what it was and here's me just jumping around <laughs> it's it's really nice having like a sketchbook spread that I could just put random color in and just do whatever kind of feel like here's me pulling out a gel pen instead of the Posca marker because I'm, I was a little worried to break it again but just doing like little outlines, just little fun things. Sometimes I'll do, in my sketchbooks, I'll make little boxes like that first and then draw things in them and sort of like thumbnail like possible ideas that I want and make them very messy. And here's me trying other colors. I might actually have a little lag, but oh well. I really hope y'all don't mind me just doing a full spread of just the most random things because like I said there is no rhyme or reason I was like oh I'm gonna practice this or I'm going to you know do this it was just I'm gonna draw and see what happens also uh, you didn't see it I did a little quote wrong quote from the Magnus archives there on the left uh, from the character that inspired it not saying that is the character but I was like I want to remember the energy uh, from what I was like inspired by so I put a little quote sometimes I put quotes or like song lyrics that I'll be listening to when I do art and stuff in my sketchbooks because then I'll know like oh yeah this was the kind of vibe I was going with uh, when I made this and I always think that's kind of cool especially because I have a lot of like relation in my head it's like sometimes I'll listen to certain things while playing a video game and then later when I'm playing that video game I will just remember what else I was listening to or having on in the background, it would kind of like be ingrained with me. I feel like I've talked about that before, but really into elf ears, uh, sticking out elf ears, as you can tell, and we'll go into the ending soon, but I hope you guys like this. See you in the non-sped up version of the video. So my camera died when I was finishing up this, but the only thing I really did was just randomly put some extra watercolor up here uh, just to fill in the gap because I didn't really know what else to draw because I was using this for color testing. And then I also did some white Posca marker over her hair because her hair is white and had like little tears and eyebrows. But that's that's all I really did that you missed um, from the camera tying. Usually that doesn't happen, but this took a while to do because I haven't done like this is a big piece of paper, so it took a while to kind of get through all of this. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. It's a little different. If you guys like the sort of sketchbook sort of spread thing, I like doing this. So if you still like that, I can sprinkle these in a couple once in a while instead of doing like full-blown pieces. It's a little less stressful on me, especially because this week I didn't really have an idea for a full piece. So I thought I'll just do a bunch of little different sketches and very different styles, but... Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.